Hey friends, in an earlier episode, we got an introduction to Azure Landing Zones. Now we're going to take a look at a reference implementation that is production ready for online and connected mission critical applications. Hans Jörg is here to show me how to reduce the time to production and integrate into an existing Azure Landing Zone today on Azure Friday. Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanson and it's Azure Friday. I'm here with Hans Jörg, who's going to teach me all about landing zone integration on a mission critical workload. You know, we've had your colleagues come on the show and talk about other things with mission critical workloads, even more important when we're going to do the final deployment to production. Thank you, Scott, for having me. I'm happy to talk about the, the mission critical uh, reference implementation and how they fit into the overall landing zone. Yeah. So landing zones exist, if I understand correctly, is that as a small business, I have one subscription and I am using that subscription for dev, test, staging, and production, which may not be appropriate for multi-subscription or larger enterprises. And for that, I might want to deploy somewhere else. And is that a landing zone? It basically provides, you're right. So it basically provides a, um, a framework uh, and the platform architecture to host workloads and applications. Yes, that's, uh, and we want to actually look into this today because what the mission critical application owner is looking for, they are looking for governance, security, and compliance within a corporate environment. That's a very good point. I think I've heard that referred to as corporate guardrails, right? There's policy, there's compliance, there's security, there's standards. And we want to make sure that we make it easy for the developer so that the pressure of those things isn't on me as a developer. And it just happens as part of the process. Yeah, correct. It's uh, the guardrails are actually built with Azure policies technically on the platform itself, or also the respective RBAC permissions that are assigned to a, a workload owner or a team that uh, is running the, uh, the mission critical workload. So from this perspective, uh, a mission critical application is not any different than any other workloads within a corporate environment. Interesting. So then that means that as a developer, I can focus on what I want to focus on, which is providing value and making implementations that work well without wasting a lot of time. And I don't have to think about the governance of the deployment of the application because those policies are set up for me. Absolutely. So they are managed and uh, operated by the platform team um, that runs the platform for an organization. And as you rightfully pointed out, the workload owners, the workload team can focus on the net, net new features that it reduces the time to market for the mission critical team and any other team within an organization. And that's what we want to benefit from. Okay. So then what you're going to show me then is really a production grade prescription, a reference implementation that I can use or other teams can use as a reference to go and support these scenarios. So I'd love to see that. Absolutely. Happy to show it. So what actually, uh, what, what I want to start, start off with is, uh, just putting us a step back and uh, quickly talking about the Azure landing zone and uh, how this is deployed within an organizational environment. So if we start um, with the top here, we have all the uh, platform uh, resources that are deployed as part of the uh, Azure landing zone accelerator uh, deployment that we are providing in our documentation. So once this and we talk, you talked about security governance so those are all the configuration the platform team makes on behalf of the application team to actually meet the corporate uh, the corporate standards so that's where we start with um, as an organization in a multi subscription environment and then this these these uh, these governance that tab is that coming from azure or is that coming from uh, these, this user interface was generated by your solution or by Azure itself? So that's actually a uh, landing zone, Azure landing zone deployment script that mm -hmm. everyone can run within their tenant. It's a tenant wide deployment that deploys the guardrails within an organizational um, tenant. Okay, that is the accelerator that's enabling me, the platform team, to set my developers up for success. Exactly. Cool. What what you what you then get once uh, and uh, I deployed that uh, for a, a a virtual bank. Um, so the the scenario we're working here is a solo bank, and uh, that's actually what they are ending up with. So they have a set of management group groups 
uh, deployed where the different landing zones uh, could be platform landing zones or workload or application landing zones are deployed within that corporate environment. So if we look into uh, the landing zone part, what we have here is a different uh, type of characteristics for a landing zone. Uh, I'm using now the singular because we're going to use those for individual uh, workloads uh, that are deployed within, uh, within, uh, within this, this part of the management group structure. Interesting. Okay, so this is a we're looking at management groups. We have ten groups, a number of subscriptions. Are those landing zones that we're looking at, or management groups that we're looking at? Here we're looking at the management groups because we want to provide the guardrails mm -hmm. per per management group. So, okay. for example, uh, a corporate landing zone has to follow maybe different policies, different set of policies. Mm. I'm zooming in now the, uh, into the details of the of the of the corporate landing zone policies. So that's how a compliant corporate connected landing zone should look like. So when we when we later on looking into the uh, reference implementation, the online or the connected one, that's actually where we fit into the corporate uh, the corporate standards. Okay, that makes sense. And what I actually have here, uh, just to uh, demonstrate and walk you through, um, I have, uh, and that's actually one of the recommendations we have not only seen within the mission critical context, working with our customer, that we have a subscription per workload and environment. So um, we, if you have a, an example of a desk, dev test and a production environment, this would uh, be reflected in three different subscriptions under the, in this case, the online management group here. Yep. All right, I'm with you so far. So that's uh, that's where we're going to work in, and that's where we're going to deploy it uh, in into the uh, into the corporate tenant. Okay. So let me now go into the context of the reference implementation for uh, for mission critical. So those are um, published as open source under the uh, Azure organization um, within uh, within GitHub. So what 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 you will see uh, in the next two uh, in the next two repositories are the two reference implementations that are actually go into either the online um, refer uh, management group or the corporate refer uh, management group structure, and uh, they have a, they sh they share a lot of commonalities. I'm gonna touch on the online one and walk you through uh, the the reference implementation, what it actually makes it up as a, a, a mission critical reference implementation, and then at the end uh, I will highlight the 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 difference to the connected one. So okay. if we scroll if we scroll down here, we have actually a uh, the architecture um, outlined here. So there are four different sections that uh, are important to highlight and they are labeled with uh, the labels A, B, C, and D. So starting at the top, uh, we have the group of global resources. So th those are the global resources that have uh, representation in more than one data center region. So the mission critical team um, wants to maximize the uh, availability of, a, of an application. So what, what they are going to do, they're going to replicate, um, they want to replicate the application services across multiple regions. And the global resources are storing the state uh, for, and the persistency layer for the application. So we have two, two type of services in there, the ones that are storing the data and the, the state of an application, and we have also the global routing uh, service in there. Uh, in this case, it's a public facing uh, application that is using front door um, uh, as a global local answer. What we then have as a deployment uh, stamp, and that's an ephemeral stamp we're gonna use within, uh, within our reference implementation um, is the, uh, the application uh, the stamp. Everything that runs the application logic, the, 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 the messaging, the key vaults that are, um, pro are required to deploy the service are deployed together with a, uh, within a regional stamp as a ephemeral stamp. Um, my colleagues have talked about the continuous validation um, mm -hmm. pipelines. 
that's actually what is rolled out as a pipeline uh, with a pipeline into a certain region. And you can have as many regions as possible uh, as, as you would like. There, it also factors in that uh, the, the requirements for the data residency. So if you have certain residency requirements, uh, you are always then restricted by how many regions you can uh, deploy into. But we have tested that uh, with uh, five, 10 regions uh, simultaneously deployed. And uh, we also got customer feedbacks and uh, we have customers they have to deploy that in production. Uh, for, um, the, the maximum deployment is up to five regions we have seen for customers. And the second uh, important part is the uh, pipelines. And that's what we call, oh, that's my, what my colleagues talked about. Um, so that's the, uh, the, the important part to validate that everything that is rolled out into production is actually uh, properly validated and tested and meets the, the quality bar of the uh, mission critical uh, application requirements. The fourth bucket of services uh, is actually the, uh, the deployment uh, the, the deployments for the for the uh, monitoring. So my colleague Sebastian has talked about the uh, health modeling and uh, the, the observability. And that's where we uh, have seen uh, a requirement for regional monitoring and for global monitoring. So those are the two uh, stamps we we're gonna we're gonna we have identified as important because we want to make sure that if a certain region goes down, uh, we also want to, we don't want to lose visibility from the, in the second region. So that's an important learning also from our customers that running mission critical applications that we have factored into this reference implementation. All right. So far, I'm with you. That makes a lot of sense. So I want to understand then you've got these policies and this, you know, this landing, this home where the landing zone will be home for the application to, to go and be managed automatically. How do we get from a conceptual diagram like this to something in the portal and then to something in production. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, that's more more than concept. The diagram is very conceptual. That's uh, that's what uh, right. what I was sh showing. But mm -hmm. uh, with the reference implementation, there is actually also a CICD pipeline um, and uh, that deploys this reference implementation and also the connected one into a landing zone within within uh, the corporate guardrails. So this is the uh, the pipeline you have seen from my colleagues, mm -hmm. and that that's actually the one that has deployed the. Uh, it takes about thirty to forty minutes to deploy this reference implementation end to end into uh, then the corporate environment. Mm -hmm. So moving back to the uh, mission critical dev subscription we have seen before that mm -hmm. is deployed under a certain management group. What we will see here, if we go to the uh, to the resource group, we see this reference architecture uh, reflected in, uh, in, in the subscription. So it has been deployed through the pipeline, through the CICD pipeline into, into this management group subscription. We also following the recommendation how to use the, the resource groups. Uh, so the mission critical application has different uh, resource groups represented and following this ABCD labels within within the architecture. So we have the global resources, um, we have the, the monitoring resources and we have the stamp resources here deployed in the UK South. That's where we uh, where we deploy the resources into the in, into the into the subscription. Now what comes uh, as an important um, consideration is, that we are getting a compliance view now. So if this has been deployed through the CICD pipeline by an application team, and now the security team key comes in, uh, security risk uh, compliance team comes in and actually monitors the compliance of this, um, of this uh, application, of this workload and uh, sees that we have some, some non-compliant resources that the application team has to remediate and we, but we also see certain uh, certain uh, controls and certain security requirements that are already compliant with the corporate policies. Interesting. Can these or should these compliance rules be gates that prevent deployment, or are they simply warnings that then cause 
you know, internal conversations to happen? In in general, what what we are recommending is that we have that we are implementing gates um, during the development cycle. It's not always possible um, to to have these gates in place, but the gates are should actually be blocked. So we are distinguishing between uh, preventive and detective policies, and our recommendation is clearly that uh, we want to go into the uh, uh, the the preventive step policies. So we want to prevent a deployment from happening so that the whole effort of uh, remediating after uh, uh, remediating policies and remediating controls after the fact can be avoided. So we I want see. to shift left. We want shift left also with uh, with the compliance status of uh, of an environment. Very cool. Okay. So then you might allow this to go into dev but at this point, it goes no further. You do your remediations, you get to 100% compliance, and then you move forward to a production landing zone. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Very That's cool. Exactly and then all of this is expressed in the online and uh, and connected reference implementation or for mission critical. That's correct. We have it all the documentation getting started guide and that's actually um, the, the last thing I want to show from from the repo. Um, the repo contains all the pipelines, all the code, plus a getting started guide. That's where you should go actually to learn more and uh, explore how to uh, how learn more and uh, look into the details how to how you can deploy that in, into your environment. And if you want to read even more details about the different reference implementation um, and the documentation within our architecture center, within the architecture center, we have the, um, the two different mission critical architecture documented. There is also a third one uh, that is documented that takes the online into a more uh, network controlled way. Uh, so that's uh, where we then have the, uh, so those are the three uh, sections I talked about. So it's the, the 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 baseline one is the online one. Then we have the one with network controls, and the most secure, most private one is the one that we see on the bottom as a uh, baseline to integrate into the landing zones. Very cool. So this means that myself and folks that are watching uh, in enterprises that might be watching who are in the process of either designing, developing, or building any kind of mission critical application, recognizing what a complex choreography it is, can take a look at these resources from Mission Critical, whether it be online with network controls or with network and landing zone, and get started right away. We've got rich documentation and a full reference implementation that you can set up in, as we heard, just about an hour, which is pretty fantastic. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Thank you, Scott, for having me and uh, that I could tell you more about the uh, Mission Critical and landing zone integration. Yeah, this has been very great. We've talked about a landing zone integration of mission critical workloads today on Azure Friday. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Azure Friday. Now I need you to like it, comment on it, tell your friends, retweet it, watch more Azure Friday.